Three little boys were playing in the street when they were hit by a truck. They all went to heaven, and the angel said to them, You weren't supposed to die. You were all supposed to live out your lives. This was not your time. To make it up to you, I'll let each one of you choose what you want to do with your life. You must run and jump on that cloud over there, and as you are flying back to earth, shout what you want to do, and so it shall be. The first boy jumped and shouted, Lawyer! And so 20 years later, he was a very successful lawyer in town. The second boy jumped and shouted, Brain Surgeon! And 20 years later, he was the best brain surgeon in his field. The third boy went to jump, but tripped over his feet and stumbled off the cloud muttering, stupid, clumsy idiot. And so, 20 years later, he was playing for the Manchester United as a striker. <laughs> the monkey and the hyena were walking through the bush talking. The hyena bravely tells the monkey he is not scared of anyone in the animal kingdom. I'm telling you with my strong teeth, there will be no way to escape. So, the monkey asks, What about the lion? He is strong, fierce, and the king. You must be afraid of him. No, said the hyena. I am not afraid of the lion. He can take me on any time. Monkey says he is also not afraid of anyone. You can call on me any time for help. Suddenly, the lion jumped through the bush and started attacking the hyena. The monkey ran up the nearest tree and watched the fight. After the fight, the hyena is badly injured, asked the monkey, why you not helped me? The monkey replied, well, you laughed so loudly, I thought you are winning. <laughs> Let's think about bad politicians and Idi Amin, the ruthless leader of Uganda, rings a bell. This ruthless leader was driving along a country road in his limousine when he saw some of his countrymen sitting next to the road, eating grass. They stopped to ask the men why they were eating the grass. They replied that they had no money for food. Then you must come to me at once, said the politician. But what about our wives, they asked. Bring them along, the politician replied. They battled to get everyone into the limousine, and they all thanked the politician and said that it's very kind of him to help them all like that. It's a pleasure, the politician replied. You are going to love the place. We are going to. The grass is almost a meter high. <laughs> as far as sports jokes go, this hilarious joke can be applied to any non-performing sports team. Now, as far as the NFL goes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are leading this non-performing race. This farmer had some family members coming to visit, and as there is not a lot to do for the family on the farm, as far as entertainment is concerned, the farmer's wife thought it a good idea to arrange an outing for the men. She wanted them to go and watch a match of, you guessed it, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. She phoned the stadium and asked if there were still any places left for the upcoming weekend's game. The guy on the other end of the phone responded, Oh, for sure, we have places left. For this weekend, we still need a center and quarterback. <laughs> History is not always very clear, but here is story to tell when having a fire and a couple of beers. Before the Battle of Agincourt in 1415, the French, anticipating victory over the English, proposed to cut of all the captured soldiers' middle finger. Without the middle finger, these soldiers would never be able to again draw the famous longbow in war against the French. The bow was made of the English yew tree, and the act of drawing the bow was known as plucking the yew. The French became very bewildered when it was the English that won a major battle, when then started teasing the French by showing them the middle finger and shouting pluck yew. Since pluck you was difficult to say, the English eventually changed the P and the L in pluck you with an F. The middle finger and the wording that came with it was born. <laughs> On the luxury train to Manchester, the supporters had arrived in their droves from the north 
to give support to Manchester United for their game against Liverpool. One supporter had even brought his wife and her little poodle along. At Birmingham Station, an American boarded the train and could not find a seat. He looked around and saw the little poodle occupying a seat. In typical American drawl, he said, Pardon me, ma'am, but could I sit on that seat while you hold your dog on your lap? No, said the oversized woman. That's my little doggy's seat. The American grabbed the dog and threw it out of the window, then sat down. After her screams had died down, her husband said, You know I don't understand you Americans. You call a tap a faucet. You call a lift an elevator. You drive on the wrong side of the road, and now you have gone and thrown the wrong bitch out of the window. <laughs> Three farmers each bought train tickets to a nearby city to go watch a major football game. Next to them, three city slickers bought only one ticket for three for the train to the same game. The farmers asked them, why only one ticket? Watch and learn were their response. Once in the train, the three city slickers squeezed into the bathroom and waited for the ticket conductor to came past. The conductor knocked on the door and said, ticket please. One of them stick his hand out and handed over the ticket. The conductor left. After the game, the farmers only bought one ticket for the three of them. The city slickers bought no ticket. The farmers asked how that will work. Watch and learn, they responded. Once in the train, the farmers all squeezed into the bathroom. One of the city slickers went to the bathroom door, knocked on it, and said, Tickets, please. Two elderly ladies were sitting on a park bench outside the local town hall where a flower show was in progress. They talked about the good old days. The one elderly lady said to her friend, Life is so boring now that we are old. For $10, I would take off my clothes and streak through that stupid flower show. Just for some fun. You're on, said the other old lady, holding up a $10 note. As fast as she could, the first elderly lady fumbled her way out of her clothes and, completely naked, streaked through the front door of the flower show. Waiting outside, her friend soon heard a huge commotion inside the hall, followed by a loud applause. The naked lady burst through the door surrounded by a cheering crowd. She shouted, I won first prize as best dried fruit arrangement. This aspiring politician decided to run for office. He will have to do everything possible to gather votes. As he was driving through one of his constituencies, he saw a guy on a bicycle falling in the road. He thought, here is a chance to gather one vote. Did you get hurt? I can help you, asked the politician. I'm okay, the guy replied. But if you didn't get hurt, your bicycle must be damaged, the politician said. The guy said, I'm okay and my bicycle is okay, I don't need any help. The politician then said, look, I am a politician, let me take you home, and all I would require from you is to vote for me. The guy looked at the annoying politician and said, sir, I fell on my butt, not on my head. <laughs> Sometimes the simples of mistakes can be so confusing this estate agent had just heard about the death of one of his clients, but because of work pressure, could not take the time off to attend the client's funeral. He had just signed a big lease agreement, and his new tenant was moving in on the same day as his client's funeral. The estate agent thoughtfully decided to send flowers to both the deceased family as well to the new tenant, so an order was placed with the local florist. Unfortunately, the florist got the messages mixed up. The new tenant received his flowers with the very confusing message that read, rest in peace. The flowers that were delivered to the funeral, however, were largely displayed at the grave with the message, enjoy your new accommodation. <laughs> Mr. Jones went into a pub for a beer. He watched the barman with amusement, saw the barman pour a beer into a tankard then add milk and a raw egg, stirred it up, and downed the cocktail. Mr. Jones was very amused by this and asked, 
How can you drink that stuff? The barman looked at Mr. Jones and replied, First of all, it has nothing to do with you. Secondly, I like it. And thirdly, it puts lead in my pencil if you know what I mean. Mr. Jones, very impressed, thought that the next time his friend came over to visit, he will mix that same cocktail that the bartender made. So it happened. His friend came over and he stirred up the drink and drank it all down. His friend immediately asked, How can you drink that stuff? Mr. Jones replied, First, it has nothing to do with you. Secondly, I like it. And thirdly, I write with a big ballpoint pen.